Good afternoon, folks. My name is Elliot Flott, and I'm the Director of Solutions Engineering at the Data and Insights Division of Tyler Technologies. I'm really excited to be able to talk to you today as part of the Enterprise Architecture Conference and to be able to share with you what we've been able to work with our clients on to be able to help connect communities of care as we are helping folks within the United States understand how valuable federal government data is and can be during the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, before I actually jump into there, I want to give you all a quick little synopsis of who Tyler Technologies is. We're a growing 5,000 person uh, software and services company that exists for a singular purpose. That purpose, quite simply put, is to empower the people who are serving the public. Now, I want to really dive into what it's actually going to mean to uh, use data during the response and the recovery of the COVID-19 pandemic and what kind of lessons we have learned as part of that process over the past year. So the first of which is how do we bring the evidence back to life? Now for folks who are actually playing along with their conference bingo, you can go ahead and check that box off. The Evidence Act as it was passed uh, under Title II means that there are certain data elements you actually need to fill out so that you can remain compliant. But that goes so much further than just compliance and checking a box. That data and the fields that need to be filled out make it ultimately much more useful so that people can find access and ultimately collaborate on that data, whether they're government employees or they happen to be a member of the public who's interested in learning a little bit more. So we've been able to work with some of our clients to really make that a reality. How are we going to, we've been able to work with folks like the CDC and CMS, we'll show you in just a moment, around how we make that data much more consumable, much easier to use, and provide answers quicker from an authoritative source like you see here. So the CDC has been publishing huge volumes of data around COVID-19 and uh, the response from a public health perspective to the pandemic. As we can see here, we have every single patient de-identified pushed out to the public so that folks can understand what kind of trends are emerging within the data if they actually want to go in and figure out how they can use that data themselves. They can discover that data, access, on, access it, and then ultimately be able to use the same tools that they want to to build out a much more comprehensive story around that data if they would like to. The same goes for folks like uh, members of the media. They know that they can go to data.cdc.gov and pull the authoritative source of data directly from the government's website. Now I'll move on in just a second to talk to how we've been able to help our clients like CMS be able to do the same thing and ultimately communicate better with the public around who is going to be most impacted if they are part of a, a vulnerable population. In this case, these are nursing homes, people who are living within these homes and what kind of disease incidents we may be seeing within a certain population. They're able to provide much more context around this data, uh, provide a single view of every single data element that folks may wanna understand around what's going on within nursing homes themselves. And C CMS was able to create this themselves, thus allowing them to go in and provide this data much more rapidly than having to go in and stand up data pipelines around this. So I'll move to another point that we've actually learned as part of the COVID-19 response, which is the data really does no good in a silo. That is no more true than what we've seen across the United States, but in the state of Connecticut in particular, where they have been able to leverage the data coming from CMS and other federal government data sources to help inform their public around what is going on within uh, their uh, localized context of the COVID-19 response. Connecticut publishes the data in an easy to consume and easy to use format and allows them to better communicate with their residents around what kind of trends are emerging in this data and where they can actually go to find uh, more information and learn more. They're able to go in and actually uh, communicate what's going on within a particular nursing home within uh, the state of Connecticut and how they're able to go in and pull that uh, up into their open data portal to best communicate around what's going on there. A final point that I'd like to make is that we are able 
to really connect communities through data. The Socrata platform is going to be able to provide an interface by which people uh, within the government, as well as the public, can discover, access, and ultimately collaborate on data, as you saw with the CDC, CMS, and the state of Connecticut, and ultimately provide an interface that uh, allows for the authoritative uh, source of that data to be consumed by anybody in the world, regardless of where they live. We've been able to take it a step further by engaging in a public-private partnership to push this data and uh, combine this data into a Socrata platform in a way that hasn't been done before. We're able to go in and pull in third-party data around home sales, around credit card transactions, and other data feeds that are going to be effective and relevant at determining how quickly and how effectively we're responding and recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic, whether that be from a societal and public health lens or even from an economic lens. So what we're able to see here is what kind of impact the pandemic has had on home sales. Are those home sales and the property values that are associated with them going to have an impact a year or so down the road when the government whether it be the county or the state, actually goes to collect property taxes on those. And it's we're able to set up the partnerships directly with the third-party data providers so that you get access to that data in near real time, and you're able to make decisions much quicker than you would have been in the past. So ultimately, I want to say thank you all very much for your time. And there will be a poll after this session where you can indicate if you'd like to learn more. I really hope that we get to speak soon. Enjoy the rest of your conference and have a great day.